Hello everyone and welcome to the video lecture series of Math 23. Today's lesson is entitled Learning Tables of Vector Fields and Work. Note that this lesson has two parts and for the first part, let us stop. So let us recall from your high school physics or maybe from Math 22 that work is an example of a scalar quantity and that the work done by a constant force F actually on this object that moves along this direction and this constant of t is given by this formula. So work is equal to the dot product between the constant force and your displacement. Note that this formula only works whenever displacement and the path of our object are parallel. So we want to generalize this work problem wherein the force is not necessarily constant and our object moves along a curve, which is not necessarily a straight line. So here we propose the following work problem. So we have a force field F having components P, Q, and R, and that force field acts on a particle that moves along smooth curve C, and the smooth curve C is parameterized by these parametric equations. Note here, that we should have the parameter t to be increasing from the initial up until the terminal point. In this case, t varies uh, from a until b. So we want to find the work done by this force field in moving the, uh, the said particle along this curve c. So we shall answer this one via an integral. So we'll be constructing an integral just for this problem. So how will we do that? So first, we have the following assumption. So for a force, uh, force field, it has components P, Q, and R, all of which are scalar fields on R3, or simply functions of three variables. We further assume that these functions here are continuous over some region that contains our curve C. So it is con uh, those are continuous over some region, doesn't matter how big or small, as long as the region contains the curve C. The curve C would be the trajectory or the path of our moving object. So just like any construction of an integral, what we do is to subdivide the domain, in this case the curve, into let's say n subarcs. So we have the following points that divide the curve C starting from P sub 0 until P sub n. Again, it is important to note that the parameter t in this case should be increasing in values starting from p sub 0 until p sub n. So next, we consider this i sub arc. So we zoom in on this part. Okay. So zooming in on that i sub arc, we look at the uh, sub arc with initial point p sub i minus 1 until the terminal point of p sub i. So we shall approximate the work done by F on this sub arc by having a constant force over this sub arc. So we just get an arbitrary point on that sub arc, let's say X sub I star, Y sub R star, and Z sub I star. So F there is assumed to be, or F at this point, will be the force along this sub arc. So moreover, instead of an arc, we shall approximate it by a line segment from the initial point to the terminal point um, p sub i minus 1 until p sub i. That is, so, uh, sorry, so that we can use the formula for the work done or in the displacement and the path would be parallel. So we have a displacement be denoted by delta r sub i and the force will be given by this f evaluated at this point. So the work done on this uh, uh, arc alone is given by the dot product between this force and our displacement delta r sub i. So we have f dotted with delta r sub i. So if you want to find the total work over the whole curve C, you can approximate it by adding the work on each sub arc. So we have the summation of the uh, work on each sub arc and uh, sum it all up for the n sub arcs that we have. So the work done is approximately equal to that summation. And if you want the work to be, or the left hand side and the right hand side to be 
equal or the approximation error on the right hand side to vanish, we simply take n to approach infinity. So we take the number sub arcs to approach infinity by having the delta r sub i's go to zero. So we have that limit. So provided that the limit on the right hand side exists, we can now define our integral. So we have the integral of f dot tr over our curve c be equal to the limit summation that we have constructed on the previous slide, provided that this limit here exists. So by looking at this construction, we now have defined the line integral of a vector field. So I would just like to emphasize the assumptions that we did on this construction. So again, first, we had f to be a vector field having components that are continuous on some region that contains our smooth curve C. And that C is, uh, can be parameterized by this parametric curve here, with your parameter T to be increasing from the initial up until the terminal point. So after defining the integral, next what we want to do would be to evaluate it. So we want to transform this integral to something that we already know or know how to evaluate such integrals. So using the parameter t, you can easily transform the vector field f into a parametric, uh, sorry, a vector field. So fro sorry, from a vector field into a vector variant function in terms of t. So note that we'll be using this parameterization. x is given by x of t, y, y is y of t, and z is z of t. t, q, and r are functions of x, y, and z. So implicitly, f here is a vector variant function in terms of t. So next, what we want would be something to replace dr with. So using differentials, we can write dr as r prime times dt. And then plugging those things on this integral, we can now transform it in this manner. So the line integral of f that dr over the curve c can be written out as the definite single integral from a until b so those are the uh, values of t a until b and the uh, integrand would be f so we have your f written in terms of t dotted with we have dr which will be replacing by r prime of t dt so basically what we have here on the right hand side would just be the usual single integral in terms of Okay, now that we have a way of transforming the line integral of a vector field into a definite uh, single integral, our second method would involve establishing a relationship of our integral here on the left-hand side with the line integral that we know of a scalar field from our previous lesson. So we do the following formulations. So once again, using differentials, we could write dr or r prime dt as such so using scalar multiplication the e dt's would cancel thus leaving a vector whose components are just the differentials of the variables x y and z so substituting all of this there and pqr to f we can now write our integral so this is what we got here so now we can write it in this manner. So f is just written in terms of p, q, and r. Then you have r prime dt is this vector here. Then doing the dot product, we can write it in this form. So here we have written the line integral of f dot dr over c as a sum of line integrals still over c of the scalar field components of our vector field f. So P, Q, and R are now all scalar, uh, scalar fields, and we're integrate. Uh, we have here a line integral of a scalar field with respect to their respective uh, variables x, y, and z. So of course, integrating such line integral was already tackled in the previous lesson. Next, uh, okay, here we just have the summary of the two ways on how to evaluate the line integral of a vector field. So we have the vector field, then you have the parameterization of our curve C. Again, T should be increasing 
from the initial point until the terminal point. So the integral f the dr or the work done by the force field f in moving an object along c is given by this integral, which you can write as a definite integral. Or you could also write it out as the sum of scalar of line integrals of scalar fields over the same curve c. Likewise, in the case of R2, so just restrict it into two dimension, we still have the following methods. So it's just an analog of these formulas for R2. So that is it for now. You may click on the second video to continue with the lesson. On the second part, we shall be solving for the work done on of a uh, force in moving an object along the curve C using the formulas we have enlisted here. So see you again, guys. Uh, bye for now.